Actually, my first instrument was the clarinet. I was in the school orchestra, and yeah, that was cool. I learned to read music, but the guitar was just more relevant to the music I was listening to. There's just something about the guitar. Once I knew a power chord, I could play a large percentage of the music I was listening to, just like move it around. And then I'd scan the radio and just jam along to whatever came on, and I would notice things on the classic rock station like Hendrix and Van Halen. I'd be like, hmm, a lot less power chords and a lot more <laughs> other stuff going on. So I eventually just started to get instructional videos. So I would go to my local music store and get one. So Paul Gilbert, John Petrucci, Frank and Bali, Ingve Malmsteen, all these guys basically were like my teachers without them knowing it. When I started playing seven string, I didn't really know much music theory, so I was very much into just exploring the fretboard and hearing cool sounds, and I noticed that there were more riffs to be <laughs> written. Once I started to really understand the fretboard, I realized there's a lot of advantages to having more than six strings. With chord voicings, tapping, arpeggio shapes, you get a lot of repetition. I stayed on a seven string for five or six years until Mashuga put out an album called Nothing. And it was eight string guitar and it was the first time I ever heard it and I was like, what is even happening? Animals as Leaders is definitely like my attempt at a perfect project. It incorporates complex harmony, complex rhythm, and even my love of electronic music and textures. For the most part, it is an attempt to merge things like jazz harmony, classical counterpoint, shred guitar, odd meter, all the above into one thing. I think Animals as Leaders sounds the way it does because of the fact that we listen to so many genres of music that have nothing to do with metal. I'll just jam along the stuff in my iTunes. That's pretty diverse. It could be everything from Rihanna to Christian Scott. I like that just because it's like I get back to Tosin the musician as opposed to Tosin the Animals as Leaders guitarist. Ibanez to me was always super visible because of the players I was learning from. Guys like Petrucci and Vi and Satriani, they all were playing Ibanez. So they were always a brand that I naturally wanted to play. They were one of the first major manufacturers to do a seven string guitar. They actually helped to validate the extended range guitar because of how well they make the instrument. They were the perfect home for me. With my first signature guitar, I, I kind of used the RG as a platform to make my perfect eight string RG. But uh, with the prototype guitars, I moved into different territory and they were open to new body shape and incorporating fan frets and a lot of design features they hadn't done before. So this is one of the guitars that helped to inspire the design of my new prototype. It's a Strandberg. It was the first time I encountered an asymmetrical neck profile. This one has hard angles, kind of defining a plane for each thumb position. And it's a really cool interpretation on how to hold the neck. You have flat surfaces that provide more stability. So this is another guitar that kind of pushed me into more ergonomic concepts for my own prototype. This is made by Rick Toon. Rick is really cool in his approach. He actually took a photo of me in a seated playing position and he drew a body shape into my arms. Um, filling the negative space, so that's that's where this shape comes from, you know? A purely raw approach to designing the body might almost look anti-aesthetic. You just have this super utilitarian shape, but as gnarly as this looks, it's one of my most comfortable guitars to hold. I realized I wanted to design something from the ground up. I basically wanted something that was a bit smaller than the average eight string. I found that the 27 inch scale was great for the low end, but it slightly changes the tension for the treble strings as well as the timbre. So the way around that was to create a compound scale or a fan fret guitar, which allows you to have a shorter scale length than the treble that progressively gets longer in, in the bass. We narrow the string spacing just to feel closer to a more traditional guitar. The combination of the shorter scale length and the more narrow string spacing gives you a, a neck that feels way less formidable than, you know, if you're jumping from seven to eight or six to eight. We actually have an asymmetrical neck profile. It's actually thinner in the bass than it is in the treble. I really like a thin, flat neck for extended range guitar, but for a lot of like anchoring positions for lead playing, I do like a bit of a rounder, fat neck. And a lot of my six string guitars do have that, and a lot of my extended range guitars don't. So I just figured I'd combine the two. 
the shape just really allows for different playing positions very comfortably. It has a huge cutout in the back for your torso. Um, obviously these cutaways allow for different you know, seating positions. And this bevel, beyond being like aesthetically cool, I think it really allows for the hand to sit more flush with the body of the guitar. You get this monochromatic but different textures. So I have like a matte satin finish on the top and then the beveled edges are polished. It looks like, you know, a single color, but you actually have this contrast and, and, and finish. I'm really into high performance vehicles, particularly like German cars like Audi and, and Porsche. So I really wanted to do something aesthetically that had a very clean, minimal look. I think we're all interested in connection and, and resonating with others and music is one of the most direct ways of doing that. It's so personal. It's what you want to say. It's what you want to express. And that's a beautiful thing to incorporate into your life.